Disney has a novel idea for its parks, uh, bipedal robots that are totally autonomous, meaning that you'd be able to walk around and maybe you meet uh, one of the characters, let's say Donald, walking and talking by himself, but instead of a person inside, it is a robot. Sounds creepy? A little bit. That's shaky and weird. Yeah. <laughs> this is kind of scary. So this comes from the Disney Research Hub. As we saw, there was the optimized version, the animation, and the actual robot. One of the three was much shakier than the other two. Which one do you think it was? So, I don't... Fun. you work with robots yeah. and you have yeah. previously worked with Disney, well, you give me your rundown. Yeah, I was actually surprised to see this video released. It seems a little premature to be to mm -hmm. oh, totally honest. But you know, we, I think we've got a long ways to go before uh, we see really good bipedal robots. The, the, the way the human brain is a really difficult thing to mimic, the way the inner ear works mm -hmm. in terms of keeping balance. I mean, they have gyros, they have a lot of technology, but it's you know, I think Honda is the only one that's really come up with anything even well, uh, close. Osimo? Yeah, and, and they don't use the, the same. All the time. Yeah, and how you can mimic an animated character, which doesn't apply. You know, they don't have to apply the laws of physics to any of those characters. Be mm -hmm. really tricky. I, I I wouldn't want to have anything to do with that. <laughs> well, when you're building robots, do you ever even consider making it bipedal or quadrupedal even? Oh yeah, we've worked with bipedal robots at my studio before. Mm -hmm. um, they're they're extremely complicated. And it's very time consuming to program. Um, it, you know, it's, it's not an inexpensive venture in terms of time and money. Mm -hmm. It's a very, very difficult thing to do. Well, I mean, they are hoping for the sky, I guess, and trying to do their best in making this happen. It reminds me a little bit of on The Simpsons, there was an Itchy and Scratchy Land episode where there was a robot army. Twitchy, <laughs> walking toward them, red laser eyes, scary as hell. And it's not an easy thing to do, as this DARPA competition video will show you. easy to uh, program and execute a robot that can walk on two legs. Clearly, we saw a lot of seizing, a lot of failing to turn a thing, and then just in shame, I assume it was shame, falling over <laughs> and kicking and crying and having a tantrum, which is what I would do, uh, quite frankly. Yeah. To be fair, they didn't show in the video uh, the successes of the DARPA challenge, yeah. you know, but it, it is a funny compilation. It's, you know, uh, like we are saying, it, it's just a really, really difficult thing to uh, create walking robots. Mm -hmm. uh, these groups that are competing at, at DARPA, at the DARPA Challenge, are phenomenal. They're Phenomenally the intelligent people. Some of the best uh, robotics engineers you can imagine. Some of the best universities. Um, it'll be very, very interesting to see how this all moves forward once um, these groups all trade notes. Mm -hmm. You know, if they're trading notes, because it's I a competition. Really I'm not do. sure how much of that actually happens. Yes, we have competition, but we also have the idea of open source and building ideas upon ideas. And yes, uh, those were some of the failures, but there are many great successes to come out of that competition as well. I'm sure you've seen certain quadrupedal robots get kicked and not fall over. That looked pretty amazing, uh, but it is by no stretch of the imagination difficult to do, as we've seen. Yeah. There's something extremely funny about humanoid robots falling. I don't know why it's more funny than other robots or people even falling. Yeah, but then we get to the, you know, the ex machina kind of robot and the laughing just stops. 
because it is a little bit uh, a little bit encroaching on our humanity, I guess, oh, or falling yeah. into that uncanny valley. Maybe we laugh because we still are at a point where we can laugh, but one day they'll be laughing. Actually, they'll be silent. Uh, it's, it's, it's interesting to talk, think about is how funny it is for when robots fall over and are, make huge fools of themselves to an extent that a robot can. Um, when we're looking at Disney parks, though, what characters do you see being able to walk like this and not being uh, extremely off-putting and scary? Yeah, like I said, I think it's, you know, on the animatronic side, they've been doing animatronic robots uh, in the park for a long time, but they're all they're tethered stationary. in some way. Yeah, exactly. So, um, I, I don't know. I, I think that the technology is so far away. Disney, if anyone's going to pull it off, it's going to be Imagineers or, or, mm -hmm. or some of the people at the DARPA Talent Show. These are the best people to conquer that task. But, right. But it, I, I still feel like it's going to be a long time till, till we see like Buzz Light, Lightyear you know, as a robot walking around Disneyland. I feel like people would get scared and try to kick it over too. I mean, it's not like push the trash can, which was a remote-controlled trash can, and someone was uh, voicing the trash can from mm -hmm. a distance and interacting with guests. Eh, trash cans are cute and funny. I mean, uh, we love R2-D2, uh, but I don't know how people would feel if they swear, had to have a conversation with an autonomous robot by itself. Right, and that's a lot of batteries to haul around to control all but the necessary servos. think of all the teenagers and... they won't have to pay, huh? Right? <laughs> <laughs> and that is the heart of this all. Stop paying teenagers. No, not really. What do you think of Disney's plans to incorporate robots that can walk on two legs? And do you find that off-putting in any way? Or is it a progressive idea? Let us know below in the comments. And please be sure to subscribe for more.